Hello. In this tutorial, we're going to build on the previous video in which I showed you how to set up an example problem um, calculating pi and submit it to the job scheduler. One of the main reasons to use a high-performance computing cluster is that you have access to many, many CPUs. Parallelization is the process of taking a program and making use of many CPUs at once to speed up the solving of some problem. There are different kinds of um, problems that we can apply parallelization to. Um, in the best case, it's called embarrassingly parallel. That's when we can take a program and um, if we give it 10 CPUs, the program will solve the problem 10 times faster. If we give it 50 CPUs, it'll solve it 50 times faster, 100 CPUs, 100 times faster, and so on. That's the best possible case. Other problems can be um, solved by many CPUs, but it involves each CPU solving part of the problem and communicating with the other CPUs to solve the entire problem. That's called a coupled parallelization problem. And it's usually a little bit uh, less efficient because of that communication step. The more communication is involved, the more tightly coupled the problem is. And in the worst case, there are some problems that can't be divided among many CPUs or even two CPUs. They have to be run just on one CPU. Luckily, though, um, there are many, many problems, many common problems that are embarrassingly parallel that are perfect for running on a compute center. Uh, one of the most common use cases is where you have a program that runs just fine on your workstation, on your laptop. Uh, you have a single input or a single value that it's looking at and it gives you output for that file or value. Um, and now you're ready to scale up and look at many, many combinations of values, parameters, or input files. So this is called data parallelization. It's where the program remains the same. You're just going to run say, a copies of that same program with different inputs. The simplest way of exploiting that kind of parallelism is with PBS arrays. So you saw how to submit a calculation of pi to the scheduler on PBS. Now we're going to write a single submission script that automatically submits lots of copies of your program with different inputs to the scheduler. The scheduler will then assign each of those copies of the program along with its input to a different CPU. And then if we have dozens of CPUs available, the total um, processing of all those different parameters or files, whatever they are, uh, will happen dozens of times faster. All right, so let's return to our um, Pi calculator as an example of a program that we can parallelize. And of course, remember that these principles apply to any program that takes an input um, and you want to run the same program with lots of inputs. This Pi calculator is just the example we've been working with. All right, so let's remind ourselves what we had before. Uh, this is the little Python program we wrote that calculates pi. Um, you don't have to worry about the details. Just know that this program takes a number of steps. And the higher the number of steps, the more accurate its um, estimate of pi will be. So for example, if I just run it here really quickly. And I give it a step size of 3. Its estimate of pi is 3.1508. Well, we know that's not quite right. It's pretty accurate, but it's not very good yet. So we're going to pretend that we're doing a research study using this program, and we want to explore different step sizes to see how the accuracy increases with step size. Now, we could just run sequentially. Um, let's pretend we had a program that took hours to run. We could try each uh, step size um, in sequence on one CPU, and then if it takes an hour to run or a couple of hours to run, and we had 10 values to look at, it would take 10 hours to run or 20 hours to run or some longer amount of time. What we want to do is divide up the problem so that each instance runs on a different CPU. So if we have an hour runtime and 10 CPUs available and 10 parameters we want to check, then it'll just take one hour to run. All right, so uh, let's take a look at the PBS submission script that we wrote before. So remember that there's this PBS preamble 
that allocates one node and one CPU. We only need five minutes of time because this is a toy problem. This is going to run much, much faster than uh, five minutes. We gave it a name. That can be anything you want. And it's going to email me when it starts, when it finishes for convenience. Everything after the preamble is going to run on the CPU, on the compute node. So it first loads a Python module, changes directory to the directory we ran the, pro the uh, submission script from, so you can find the CalculatePy program that's in that same directory. And then it's going to run CalculatePy, uh, and we were using a value of 100 before. All right, so let's copy that PBS submission script to um, a new file just so we don't lose what we already had. And now we're going to edit that script. We actually don't have to make many changes. Uh, PBS is set up to handle this use case because it is so common. All we're going to do is add a new PBS directive, which is dash T. Dash T creates an array job. So an array job just reads this script and it's going to create a lot of sub jobs, um, each with a different value and run the uh, code that comes next in each of those sub jobs. There are different ways of specifying these sub jobs. Um, for example, I can just say one through eight. What this will do, it'll create eight array jobs, each one of which gets one node and one CPU. And it's going to label each of those jobs one through eight. So what we'd like to do, uh, if we were to run it right now, it would just run eight copies of Python CalcPy with argument 100. We want to modify this argument so that we're doing something different each time. And what we can do is replace 100 with a special variable, PBS array ID. This array ID gets replaced with the value associated with the sub job being run in the array. So these eight jobs will be labeled one through eight. PBS array ID will have values one through eight for each of the jobs spawned. So the effect is we'll run calcpy with a value of one, a value of two, a value of three, four, five through eight, each on different CPU in parallel. Now the number of CPUs that get used at a time depends on how many CPUs are, are free. We can limit how many run at a time with this percent sign argument. So if I only want to run four of these jobs simultaneously, I can restrict that with this argument. But um, for our experiments here, we're just going to leave it undefined. It'll run as many as it can. All right. Let's run that. I'm just going to quickly take a look at the jobs running. They're all queued up right now. You see how it created eight jobs. And now it found a place on one, two CPUs, four CPUs, six. And now they're starting to finish. So very quickly, it was able to run those eight instances on eight different CPUs. And of course, as always, you have to think about running computations that take hours or days. Um, and it would spread these computations and it would run for hours or days and finish that much faster since it's running on different CPUs. All right, so last time when you ran a serial job, you got a single output file containing the value of pi, the estimated value of pi. This time we're going to have similar output files, but they're each labeled by the array ID. So in this case, dash one, dash two through eight. Let's take a look at the contents of those files. All right, when there was one step size, our estimation of pi was 3.2, not great. Let's take a look as we increase our step size. And you can see that it's rapidly um, converging on the uh, on better estimates of pi. Okay. I want to show you that there are other ways of setting the um, array ID. You can also give it a comma delimited list. 
So I could say 100, 200, 300, 400. And again, PBS array ID variable will take on those values for each of the different jobs. And I can submit it again. There they are scheduled. And they started running. All right. So um, just in the interest of time, I've been using a trick to, uh, to very quickly execute this command, watch qstat-t-umfrick. So let's go over that a little bit. So um, qstat, as you remember, just shows you the jobs running on the, on the queue dash u with um, username shows you what jobs are running or queued under my um, my username the dash t is what shows you the um, the elements of the array if you didn't have the dash t it would just show you I don't think I'll do it again show you what it looks like all right, if I just do qstat u, my username. All right, you can tell these are array jobs because they have these square brackets behind them. But it doesn't show you really what's happening with all the sub jobs it created. That requires that dash t argument. All right, so you can see there's actually only one sub job still running, uh, and it was the case with 400. And if we look, we now have output files that have those array IDs, 100 through 400. There we go. All right. So a much more accurate value of pi, and we can specify arbitrary values here. Well, that's not quite true, actually. So because these, um, these array IDs actually get incorporated into the name, we can't give it arbitrarily large values. If I try and put 400,000 in here, for example, it starts to cause problems with the scheduler. So one trick you can do, if you want to do really large values, is you can um, basically extend the array ID. So I'm going to create a new variable. I'm going to call it num steps. I'm going to say it's equal to the PBS array ID. And we're going to use num steps down here. All right. I'm going to do a little bit of shell magic. So we have to put these curly braces around it, around this variable to separate it from the values that are coming next. And then I'm going to add three zeros at the end. All right. So now this will do 100,000, 200,000, 300,000, 400,000, because I'm creating a new variable that has this longer number and then passing it into my program. And again, the whole point is just to avoid having to do very large numbers in our array IDs, because very large numbers will be invalid for array IDs. All right, let's see if that works. Um, you know, resubmit right here. Jobs are running. You notice here that the, the subarray ID is still just a small number, a reasonable number. And we can look again at um, the output labeled with that ID. Uh, it doesn't show the number of steps here, but it would have been in this case, 400,000 steps, because we appended those three zeros at the end. All right, so that's just a little trick to be able to pass very large numbers in as your parameters. So again, this is the simplest possible way of solving an embarrassingly parallel problem, where you just want to have different arguments being passed in um, to the same program. Next, we're going to look at another program called GNU Parallel that is much more sophisticated, much more powerful, but it's really doing the same thing. It's spawning copies of the same program, 
But there you can pass in lots of different combinations of different values. Here we're sort of limited um, to passing in one value that changes the job array ID. There are tricks we can do to, to try and um, use that ID to get multiple values or file names, etc. But GNU Parallel is a much better fit if you're doing more sophisticated parameter sweeps or if you're passing in multiple files to a single program. So we'll talk about that in the next video. Um, goodbye till then.